1997, a crack golf instruction team was sent to prison by the PGA for teaching crimes they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the San Antonio Underground. Today, still wanted by the PGA, they survive as online golf coaches. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can Google them, maybe you can hire the Birdie Brigade. All right, that was fantastic. Got Rich, he's asleep at the wheel, as usual, and uh, I'm having to carry all the weight. It's all right, I got big shoulders. <laughs> well, we are back. Last week was a fiasco and a disaster. We know what to do with a wedge. We know how to chip. and We can even putt with our wedges, but we cannot operate a podcast, and we've tried it in various forms here and there. And it never really ever seems to uh, be professional looking anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to try it again. So this so, week we're going to do it all over again. None of last week coming. <laughs> no. But we should be better this week. We have a script. Best. It was the best the best podcast, the most professional. No, no well, let's not whatsoever. let's not go that far. <laughs> no, it wasn't. There were lots of problems, um, but we're live today, and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. And namely, it's the launch of the off-season training academy that is going to go out next week to everybody in the Get Golf Fit Academy, as well as the Single Digit Blueprint. So everybody's going to get access to this. We're kind of wanting to give a teaser to all the golf fitness guys and just say, hey, we do more than golf fitness. We also kind of do uh, golf lessons, and we teach the Butch Harmon method. So I'm getting Butch Harmon out of the way and uh, that. So that's that because we're all business today. <laughs> that's why That's why there was no podcast from last week. <laughs> now you just figured it out. For the, for the record, last week there was no Butch Harmon uh, mention and there was no fart sounds. <laughs> and, and it, that's and, true. And that, and that, that We're podcast. all business. This is all business, dude. We're not screwing around anymore. Oh, oh that makes complete sense now. <laughs> it's all business. So what this is about is every – winter wherever you're at the winter happens in australia right so mm. it happens to be summer there right now because everything's right now, upside yeah. down um so anyway every winter uh it's really annoying people they want to play golf even if you live in a warm weather state there are periods of uh cold weather snaps that come in and it kind of messes up your groove so what we wanted to do is create a kind of a man cave slash off season program. So people can maintain the progress that they had the momentum from the summer and the warm months through the winter, because I mean, we've done a couple of different things and I'll cover that here in a second, talking about how people can actually regress. Um, but for the most part, people just kind of slack off and get lazy and you know, it's human, human nature, but you're, basically setting yourself up to be on a hamster wheel over and over and over again because you're repeating the cycle every year. And there's just some research on school children. When they begin summer break, they start to unlearn things at a rather rapid pace. So they give them the, they gave these children a test. I found this on Wikipedia. They give children a test at the end of summer and at the beginning of fall whenever they come back to school and basically with math they lose 2.6 months so if they're not in school a full year basically they're in there for eight months so they lose about 25 percent of what they learned the previous year just by having this huge break the same thing happens to you when you stop doing stuff like golf and i've even read reports on fighter pilots if they go and go on a vacation for as little as a week and they come back, their proficiency has dropped quite a bit compared to a fighter pilot who has been 
practicing every day. And that's really what they do. They practice every single day. Um, so there is something to this. And that is what this program is designed to do is to erase that and actually move you ahead. It's actually the perfect time to work on your fundamentals and your basics. So we're heavy on that in this training academy. And this will take you through uh, the Christmas break. And then if you stick to this plan, I will allow you to have Christmas. I just will. You can you can go off no, the wagon. No call to your stockings. <laughs> yeah, you, you will actually get a present maybe from your loved ones and you're allowed to participate. But if you don't, then you get Festivus and you have to go to George Costanza's house and wrestle his dad, which to me doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. And then there's something to do with a pole. I don't really understand it all. Um, so Rich, uh, have you had any problems with winter sabotaging your game before? Mine was once in college. So I had, I came off, it would have been, uh, I'm trying to think what here it was. So I never had long layovers, a long, long time away from golf at that stage. So um, winter time, I went to New York and I just came off my fall semester. I had a really good semester, went to New York for two and a half weeks, came back and golf swing was, to <laughs> golf swing was totally different. And so, uh, but at that point I hadn't learned to adjust from breaks like that. Um, so there is a learning curve from that, but if you're not in that stage where you can just pick things up like they were two weeks ago or two months ago, um, that's where we start seeing some issues. And I think and I, you ex gave an example with the school kids and then the fighter pilots, but we can go back and look at actual golfers now. We've got enough data on our challenges to see where they are. Usually we start with the power and distance challenge. We didn't do it this year, but I mean, normally we do. So we have some idea of where people are coming off those winter months. And it seems like there are a handful who get better through the summer and then they take a complete break and they're back to where they are. There are occasionally a couple that will come in and each um, time they come back are a little bit better, but they're still fighting an uphill battle. When right. but essentially with a minimal effort over the winter break, basically be starting close enough to where they were before. Um, so, and you know, these are golfers who are, are willing to get better. So it just seems like taking a complete break over the winter. Um, it's just a bad move. <laughs> um, and it's, it's there's no excuse for it because yeah. uh, golf is such a popular sport. Uh, you're able to find there's an indoor range somewhere. I'm sorry, you can just find it. Even if you got to go sneak over to the Golf Galaxy, they got driver bays. They let you hit all you want. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you get to know those guys, they'll they'll be like, yeah, bring your whole set in and play around the golf on the simulator. They don't care. Yeah. And you might buy something while you're there. But that's kind of what this whole program is about. Um, but first, Rich, I saw Craig Perry on TV the other day, and I know we covered this last week. Um, and I noticed when you were here, you had a voodoo doll uh, <laughs> of Craig Perry hanging from the rearview mirror. And I just wanted to kind of dig into that and see what that's all about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really have an issue with him anymore. But um, back when I was in the uh, the phase of autographs from, you know, golf pros were a big deal. Um, I remember going to the Byron Nelson with you that one year. And just asking for his autograph when no one was around. So in at the bar in Nelson, the way you would get from the practice range to the first tee is you would have to zigzag through areas where you would have to like go through uh, uh, where patrons are. So you just couldn't go the entire way underneath the ground, basically come out the first tee. You you had to. Um, strategically plan your way so when tiger goes to play um you know there's a few little sections that he will go so he can get from practice to the putting green and then to the first um, tee. Uh, man I'm, I'm sitting there 1997 98 maybe 
Yeah, I'm standing on. I'm standing at <laughs> Southern Hills talking to Nick Faldo. I'm talking to Nick Faldo and his caddy. Me and my girlfriend are there. We're sitting there talking to them, like just having a regular conversation. I'm asking him about sand shots. And he's explaining stuff to me. He's very, very cool. Here comes Tiger Woods and three million people. Yep. Literally ruined it. Faldo packed up and he got out of there. He's like, yeah. I'm done with this shit. Yeah. I'm gone. Yeah. So I don't, you know, yeah. Tiger Woods, no good. But you could probably be a body double for Craig Perry. If you thought about getting into that line of work. I would, I, I, the left to right shot just irks me. So, and he, you don't like that. oh, I just can't stand it. Uh, is he but, the one that is, <laughs> was in Hawaii and had all the troubles, that Australian right. golfer? That was Who's that? Alan Lee. <laughs> what the heck is going on with that dude? Got kidnapped or something? If you want to believe it. <laughs> so, but getting back to that. So he was walking. So most of the pros will zigzag between certain uh, points on the um, from pr practice range to the first tee. I see Craig Perry walking just straight down the path and no one's around him. Well, you nobody knew who he was. Well, I did, but no one does. And I remember, you know, I'm walking with him and I'm sure he's either going to the practice putting green or the driving range, whichever, but I'm walking with him. So I'm not holding him up. And I just remember asking him for an autograph and uh, he's like, yeah, no, not right now. I'm busy. And I was like, okay. And, I'm and like, he, hadn't even, he hadn't even started warming up or anything. Yeah. So I give people the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm walking with you. It was really, you, you know, so if you, mad. If, yeah, if you if you were, um, yeah, I, I guess I was back then, but now I don't really care. I, I mean, those guys have to give so many autographs. It's yeah, you you're not going to please everyone, so not a big deal. But um, yeah, I've Let's never do a been little uh, housekeeping this week. Do you have up the red zone so we can go over that real quick? The results, or can you pull that up super fast? Yeah, let me pull that up. Um, while he's doing that, I just want to talk about the three core components that we're going to be covering in this off season training Academy. And it's kind of uh, developed over time. And we're actually, we're a little behind putting this together. We're supposed to be live this past Monday, but we're going to have it live for next Monday. So uh, when you watch this, you'll be able to access that. And if you're not a uh, member yet you can become a member just go to getgolffit.com take us up on the one dollar for seven days you can check it out see if it's for you then it's just $14.95 a month after that uh, but the three core things we're going to cover in the off-season training academy is we're going to give you a clear practice plan we can tell you exactly what to do it's so easy and i'll show you here in a little bit i have uh, most of that done but uh, i'll show you what i do have done and then we're going to take care of your body and your eating. Honestly, this is the probably the number one, number two thing that people suffer from through the winter months is eating and getting out of shape. And then you got to recover from that as well. So, I mean, you're really putting yourself on the eight ball with no practice and, you know, getting fatter basically over the winter months. And I'm guilty of that as well. And we have, we're going to have two different workouts for you to pick from. You'll be able to do the Silver Fox or the Power Distance uh, workouts. And if you're going to do the Power Distance workouts, we want you to measure your distance as well. Because we didn't do the PDA um, this year. We're supposed to do it now, but uh, we really ran long with a, with a few different things. So, uh, you know, we'll be able to get that in. You'll get the same results from it. Normally we do that power and distance to to measure how much gain you have during the challenge. With this one, it's going to be a little bit more of um, just making sure that the calibrations between your clubs are correct. Well, I don't know about that. If you're doing the PDA workouts, you're going to get some benefit. And even if you're doing right. silver I mean, fox, you're going to gain that, distance. That's, you know, that's always in the back there. Uh, we want to make sure we know how far each of your clubs go. And then at the end of the OTA, we'll do another one just to kind of see if there are any differences. Yeah, um, we're measuring distance. Right. Basically. But initially, 
as part of this off season type of challenge or that or, or academy that we're putting together um we want to make sure and pay attention to um the gaps that may be there and that could be you know you've had a pretty busy summer schedule um that six sign loft may have changed and so right we're going to cover all that, that. Here in a so, and then so go number one there. clear practices plan number two body number three mindset uh, so you need to do away with tip of the day bullshit. We only cover Butch Harmon here. We don't mess around. It's all business today. All business. No fun. Rich, if I see you smiling, I'm coming over there. All business today. Um, so those are the top three things. And then we move on um, to the red zone results. And Rich, you have some pretty good results there. You want to share that for us? I don't know if I can share the screen. Let me try. I tried that last week and that didn't work, but maybe this will. You broke the podcast last week. I'm going to blame you because I can't blame myself. That would be bad, right? Okay. And if not, I will. I'll try to pull it up. Let me see if this works. But, you know, honestly, maybe that is what broke the, uh, it's the podcast. Done. I don't really see it coming up again. Let's give it a second. Well, he's having some trouble. So yeah. turn it off and then uh, let me give I you will, the link. I will attempt it now. You got the link? Yeah. So with the red zone, if we can reduce the proximity to the hole from 100 yards and in, one, you have a better chance of making that putt, but overall, your scores will drop. And so, right. um, so the way we work it is the closer you get to the hole, the more points you get. And then over the course of the five weeks or six weeks that we do the challenge, we'll add the gains up from there. So the closer you get. Uh, you see that, Rich? Yeah, I see it now. Okay. So both. I mean, pretty much everyone had a really good. John came off um, uh, the California fires, so he didn't have a good uh, last assessment, but pretty much saw. If you look at his third assessment, saw some pretty good gains. So, uh, yeah, so and we go from the first and the the first and the last one is where we get the total gains. So what but you're looking else, at here is uh, with the red zone challenge, we had three targets. We had 100 yards, 75 yards, and 50 yards. Ideally, we want a person to use one club with different swing links to achieve these distances. Yeah. However, these are all fluid, and they change with wind uh, and different uh, factors, You know, even counting in roll in real life. Um, so you were given a score, so you would hit to these three targets, and you scored yourself. And that's where these numbers come from. These are actually points. So the higher the point total, because I know in golf, low numbers are supposed to be better. But in this one, we want more numbers. Yeah. So you look at uh, plus 23. He's gained 23 points because he's individually gotten 23 better point totals through the challenge from beginning to end. So if you look at Tom C, um, you know, with with week one, what does D1 stand for, Rich? What is that? It says D1, W2, W4, W6. Day one? Day one. Okay. I, I'm i having trouble here with the Australian it language. Wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a podcast without that. <laughs> so day one, he got one point on 50 yards, which is terrible. 75 yards? One point, 100 yards, two points. That's really bad. But at the end, of week six, he got 11 points. So he added 10 points in there. Yeah. Um, and then he, he goes on and on. So he gained 23 points. And I'll show you another interesting one here in a second. But for example, uh, five points is a bullseye. That's like you hit the flag, essentially. Yeah, Four six points shots is for each target. So the max really essentially, if you hit all six in, is 30 points. So 
typically the within five feet is when they get four points. So we're looking at <clears throat> um, 24 being your max. Yeah, so four points for five feet, three points for 10 feet, two points for 15 feet, and one point for 20 feet. And if you're outside of 20 feet, that's zero points. So you're probably missing the green by a lot more than that, in all honesty. And like Rich said, 24 points, uh, actually 30 points. How many shots do they take? Six? They have six shots at each target. Okay. Your max okay. point, five points for a bullseye. So your best score you can possibly get is a 30 for each one. So um, we have some guys that, that actually do pretty well on their point totals. Uh, we haven't seen anybody really break the 20 point barrier other than Brian Terry. And he, his numbers are actually pretty interesting because if you look at it, 50 yards, he's got 18 points like right out of the gate, day one. Week six, he's got 22, which may not seem like a lot, but when you're putting, he's getting them really close. So when he narrows that down, he's, his birdie putts become even closer to the pin. Uh, that's where this is really important. But even for a good golfer, you know, he's only improved by two points here on 75 yards and eight, which is substantial from 100 yards and in. Um, I don't think I'd want to play Brian Terry. I think he would crush me <laughs> with these kinds of numbers. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's where it is. I mean, he knows his strength right there. These numbers tell him that um, initially, if we look at his initial uh, assessment, his 50 and 75 are decent. It was the 100-yard one that was probably um, where he needed to focus a little bit more work on. Um, 18 on the on the 100 yards at the end is, is solid. So – but initially looking at it, that's probably where his game was lacking is that at that hundred yard one versus right. the seventy five and fifty. And um, if he's having to choose his layup spots, let's say he's playing a par five. Yeah. And he, you know, some people are stronger at a hundred yards, believe it or not, than fifty. Yeah, it could so, be any type of yeah, any type of shot where you need to play it back out to the fairway to a number. If you could yeah. know your strength, um and he's looking at fifty yards would be fifty yards where he would do it. It's the same with Michael C. right there. I mean, his 50 and 75 are pretty good too, um, but his 101, his numbers are a little bit down. So after this challenge, he can say, okay, well, I can spend a little bit more time on the 100 yard. I've got the 50 and the 75 pretty much where they need to be. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the the challenge we're faced with. I think Mike, uh, there's two Mike C's, but um, there's Mike Carver and Michael Clark. And, but the, 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 the first one on the, Mike C, the the second place one, the same boat. Actually, both Mike C's are pretty much the same. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like the first two distances is where um, they're actually good at, and then the, the hundred yard one. I think overall, a hundred yard one is the one that gives most people the the. the yeah, and I mean, if you're challenge. James Reeves here, he's got eleven at seventy five and fourteen at a hundred, so you might want to be looking. Um, you know. Yeah, more at the seventy five, and that would basically be okay. He. he He's dialing it, his swing down a little bit, and it may not be sequenced to where he thinks it needs to be. Yeah, um, his, his back swing length is yeah. probably not where it needs to be on this one. Yeah. In all and that's honesty. why that's why with this challenge we have them use that one club that will get them to that hundred yard distance, and then dialing it back to seventy five fifty. We're not left with exact yardages that we practice on the course. So why adjust? We want you. We want to train you to be able to adjust your swing with the one club yeah we know that you can have five wedges in the bag if you want um but ideally even if you have five wedges in the bag you pro most likely going to run into a scenario where you won't have the exact distance you want for the full shot on each of those five wedges so right. being able to adjust your swing in order to hit these marks and learn that that process because it is a process um if it you, really if, becomes simple, yeah. If you just you get go these out basics there. down, and it yeah. really does lower your score tremendously. Even if you're not that good, if you can get these basics down, your your score is going to drop. Yeah, because if you bit. just go out to the course and be like, okay, I'm left with 75 yards, I'm just going to think about hitting it softer. Well, when you think that thought and not practice it, most likely is a a decel type of approach on your swing and. 
And because you haven't practiced it, it may come up short or you might hit it further past. So, yeah. And so I think with this one too, uh, we probably need to look at maybe doing um, a modified version of the assessment. See, this for us, uh, the point system gives us how what the well, this is just one the... measurement of it but yeah we do need right. to do a little bit of directional on this yeah because it, we could find that you know and the, our assessment as it is right now just gives us proximity to the whole doesn't matter if it's left right back or front um but what we may find is say for example um um let's take michael c in six spot um 100 yards is easy issue right there now is it the points low because he's hitting it left or the points low is because he hit it right. Or is he hitting it too long or too short? So typically at that one, you might not find it goes too long, but so the assessment doesn't cover which direction they're going in. And that could be a red zone challenge, you know, update that we do in the future. Um, but looking at this will give you an idea of which, which area needs to pay, you need to pay more attention on. But if you're the actual participant, you might know exactly um, what area. I mean, it could be a 100-yard shot, and then, you know, you might know exactly, okay, I go left on that one more than anything. So I need to correct yeah. that. So um, that could be a version that we – or an update that we do in the future when it comes to that. But this will give us – it gives you a good foundation to work from. Um from this particular um or these distances but everyone had a really good um i would say john c he would have had a plus if the those fires didn't go through um he pretty much had a couple of weeks layoff just because of those fires but he yeah, was you don't really want to be uh, breathing that jump yeah so everyone would have had a plus positive um gain which is fantastic anytime we see the positive gains means you're reducing the proximity to the hole um and if we can do that we can reduce your putts score better so yeah that's that's the red zone challenge and so what we're doing with the, the ota the off-season training academy is kind of bringing some of what we do in the single digit blueprint over into the golf fitness academy to kind of mix it together and show you and it just makes sense uh to keep things basic and easy in the off season so we're going to detail out the exact plan so if you've you've actually have this live and you're watching this uh, we'll cover exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it, cover the calendar, show you the practice stuff, and all those good things. So you can go to get, getgolffit.com and try this out for a dollar and just see it all. Not a bad deal at all. And we're going to get the dollar offer onto the single-digit blueprint as well. We're having to convert over software that just works better and easier for everybody. So we'll get that done uh this off season that's our off season training rich so let's get started here i'm going to share my screen again and show you the off season training academy all right so here it is um if you go to the member library this is not live yet but if you go to the member library you are going to see it right here so that is where we're at. And this video that we're recording right now is going to go right here whenever we get that done. So this is kind of a work in progress. And here's some of the things we talked about, the summer learning loss, um, reading. People lose about two months during the summer because they don't read anything. Um, and then the three critical core components, the action plan, which is what we're giving you here. We'll detail that out for you. Uh, that you need to take care of your body and you need to have the right mindset. And we're going to teach you all of those things in this. So here is the high level overview that we're going to be doing for the next six weeks. And we'll discuss each one of these. So maintaining touch is probably the number one thing that you lose when it, when you, when you're trying to come back to the sport, we're talking about putting, chipping, just the comfort level of gripping a golf club and your and your stance. Heck, you may even forget. You may even come back and have a totally different stance than you did in the past summer. I know when I was growing up, that was often the case. Uh, and sometimes that might work in your favor. 
Um, I know a grip change or an alignment change. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, going away from the game and coming back might allow you to, because it might that change might feel uncomfortable, but actually stepping away from the game and coming back and then adjusting to the correct either grip change or the alignment uh, might actually feel better for you. So sometimes might be easier. Yeah, I've always found a grip change is easier to do off the course than while you're practicing. So when I when I usually recommend well, it for sure. sure. Um, gripping a club like right here in the office, the way I need to, and just waggling, and that's it. And then don't and for about a week, just keep doing that, and then go hit balls with that new grip. It will right. feel a little bit more natural, um, and won't be a, a painful you know change because a slight change with the grip can feel so foreign. So yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> what we're going to be doing, we're going to be introducing a brand new module. This is brand new. It's going to be called the Mitch Cumstein Memorial <laughs> Night Putting Module. And it's for putting at night. And that's exactly what we want you to want you to do. If you have carpet or a putting green, all we want you to do is every other day just knock around on it for a few minutes. That's really all it takes. Um, maintain your, your chipping. You just want to keep the feel going. Um, if you could do it outdoors, that's great too. You know, if the weather is good and you can make your way to the golf course, go do it. Make an excuse to get out there. So we're just looking for like 20 to 30 putts, 20 to 30 chips, nothing major there. And we have that detailed out in the calendar, and I'll go over that in a second. You'll kind of see how this all works together. Um, another core thing that we teach is called greasing the groove. We call it GTG and it's basically neural programming. So if you're not familiar with that, it's basically perfect practice done randomly to program your mind. So when you, it's almost like driving a car, you don't even think about it anymore. Like how hard you hit the gas pedal or the, the brakes or, you know, when you're trying to give somebody a gentle ride in the car, unlike Bronco, uh, you know, an enjoyable ride, I should say. It's really <laughs> hard. Um, I mean, you don't even think about it, right? I mean, you just drive the car. It's nice and smooth or jerky, depending on your technique. You don't think about it. So that's greasing the groove. You've just done something so many times that the brain just goes on autopilot. And that's really what we want to get your grip, your setup, and your alignment to. Just like it just happens automatically and those things can get out of whack too trust me so that's another thing we're going to try to do is get you back on the proper path for each one of those things and then step three of the plan is a practice plan we, we've come up with two of them one is a short game focus one of them is a long game focus and these work like our workouts so we've designed them to work just like a workout. I mean, you've got sets and reps and all that stuff, and you just run through it like a workout program. And it's the most efficient way we've found to budget your time. It keeps you from screwing around and getting lost. You know, like, oh, I'm going to go practice my wedges. And you think that's focus. But then it turns into something else, and before you know it, you not worked on your wedges at all. You've hit your driver 50 times just how most guys end up anyway. They like to let the big dog eat. And then step four is uh, exercise. So we, we have two choices here. You can do the Silver Fox. It's guys over 40. It's a body weight program. Or you can do the Power and Distance, which is a, a elevated version of core to score. And you're going to use weights and all that good stuff. And it's it really works on balance and power and rotational power and things like that. Thir Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays are going to be doing a new thing called durability. And I'm going to film that tomorrow and that will be live in here. So probably by the time you're watching this, it will already be in here. Durability is kind of our flexibility program, but it's based on uh, myofascial self-release which, you know, tight muscles rich right now suffering from something that would benefit tremendously from uh, the self-release program that we have. 
So we'll get that in there and show you how to do it. It's in a full body program and depending on the uh, reception of it, we'll break it down into different components of the body. So, you know, you can spend as much time or as, as little time as you want. Basically, you could hit trouble spots and then move about your day. So, Rich, I know you have a kind of weakness in your left hand or arm. Shoulder. Oh, well, it's my arm too, yeah. But it's coming from my shoulder, so. Yeah. And I just did a quick test. I was just touching on Rich, Rich's back, shoulders, and arms, and I found a giant knot right here, and it stems from when he had his tonsils removed, and he was kind of sleeping weird on it, and it – kind of inflame the muscles there. So that's what this program is about. We'll, we'll try to address those things. Um, and then the next thing, and I'll let Rich talk a little more about this one, is tracking stats. And I'm not talking about just your golf scores, which we want you to kind of review the past season, or if you're playing right now, start, you know, add this into your program or even next spring whenever you get back to it. But in addition to that, uh, tracking your body weight, your body fat. And uh, we also have like a, a fitness test you can take to measure your fitness and things like that. But we need some stats and we need these, this information to kind of see where we're at, what we can attack to work on, because we have so many workouts in here that you can adjust them as needed. So if you're not overweight, but you want more power, you can easily swap out any workout that we have to follow along with this. But if you are overweight, you know, we have programs for that too, and you can kind of plug and play, but we don't know where we're at unless we measure things. So Rich, why don't you talk about what you came up with? And I'm going to share that to everybody in the files, which was uh, the spreadsheet that you came up with. Yeah. I know the consensus on our coaching group was they, most of them prefer to use an app. But um, you and I know that being connected to devices while we're playing golf isn't the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, and majority of the apps, I mean, I know some of them do run um, reports, but um, not all of them do. And then at the same time, not everyone, even if they run reports, they don't um, analyze them. So they're doing the work, but they're not really looking at the reports and they're not analyzing, you know, what they're doing. So um, with this one, it's a bit of more of a, a manual approach, but with that comes with uh, a little bit more of a, uh, the ability for us to help them review it um, and understand where their game's at. And we're just looking at some primary uh, uh, data um, I know you can get a little bit more um, advanced when it comes to this. Um, the spreadsheet will track, and we can go over it if you want to. Are you pulling it up? Because I still see the screen. I've given it. I've just let them download it. Basically, you're uh -oh. just going to record your your shots and whatnot. I thought today we we could. I mean, we could do that next week. Kind of cover some of the uh, the statistics and go over them. Actually, we'll have some turned in. Um, well, but we may not. Gonna, I mean, because it's, it's 10 rounds before it gives us the report. I mean, we could request that report a little bit earlier. But um, the way I've set it up is you will place the, 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 the rounds information into this spreadsheet. So from hole one to hole 18, you're going to put the par, you're going to put your score, you're going to put the fairways hit, you're going to put the greening regulations hit, uh, and you put the number of putts. Um, now, I know we talked about this last week, the, the ability to understand, well, I may have hit the fairway, was it left side or right side, or did I miss the fairway left side or right side, and what the tendencies are with that. Um, and so we're just going to leave that for notes in the special comments. Um, say, for example, you missed the fairway. Yeah, that's the, yeah, so that one there, you might want to blow it up a little bit larger. Yeah, so in the... Tell me how to run a podcast, man. <laughs> the special comments um, is probably where if you missed the fairway, you know, did you, you can put an L for left and an R for right just to be, um, 
And then on the that's pot probably where you're going to get your good your good information is over here is with yeah. your special comments because I mean it's pretty antiseptic. You're, let's just say like the other day we played a par four was the first hole. I got a five on it. I did not hit the fairway. So put did I put a zero here, Rich. If you didn't hit the fairway, yeah, you can just leave it blank. If you're going to hit the fairway, you're going to hit the green. You would put one. Because it's going to tell you that it's not automatically either. for you. I mean, you could so, put zero. It doesn't matter. But um, driver right. And I think my wedge was to the right, too. Yeah. And, and then that you, was the theme all day long. And that's yeah. what we would see if we filled out this whole form. Yeah. And then you could, if you hit the green, you could say, you know, it was 20 feet from the hole. So you could put a little bit more information. Because you might have really good stats, but then, like, on the green and reg, but your putts are high, and that could be because your green and red uh, proximity to the hole is on average 25 feet. Well, you know, your putting statistics might show, you know, you're at 2.3 per hole. Um, mm -hmm. right. so, that's, so that's where you can add this. But this will automatically calculate the outscore, automatically ca calculate the in, your total. Um, then we have it. It shows up it, over here. Yep, on your on your ten round evaluation, it'll automatically go over there. Um, so it, after ten rounds, I mean, it'll run the the average during the uh, after each round. But after ten rounds, that gives us a really good average on what we see um, from your scoring average to your fairways hits to your uh, green regulations and your putts. And right. so from there, we can identify a little bit better um, because if we can allow you, I mean. We understand that even with all of the challenges that we have, that your time is valuable and you may not have hours upon hours to go to the driving range. So um, while each of our challenges are focused on, you know, 30 to 45 minute sessions on the range, this will add to that because it's going to identify what you should be working on. Because even with... Um, uh, I think the most... I mean, we don't have it really in here, but I mean, this area right here to me is the most important because you're going to be able to draw some conclusions yeah. from over 10 rounds of what I like to call the low hanging fruit. And the low hanging fruit is the area that is the easiest for you to fix for the best improvement, the fastest improvement, should I say. And it might not be something that you think it is. It could be something totally different. That's why these notes are so important. And, and you know, like Rich is talking about, okay, so you missed the green, but what side did you miss the green on? Or are you hitting the green? How far away from the hole are you? You know, what was the distance that you hit your wedge from? Put all that stuff in here because it matters. And then you can draw some conclusions from looking at it. And then you can say, okay, my putting from 30 feet and in was terrible. I had four three putts. Well, right there, you can knock four strokes off your game just by improving your lag putting. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the real beauty of this spreadsheet. So we'll cover this. This is kind of an ongoing thing, but we're going to ask for this probably midweek. I want you to go back. If you keep old scorecards, go back and do your best, your best effort on this and try to get 10 scores in there. Yeah, and if you're just great. starting, just do it moving ahead. Yeah. And the, the, the way you would do this is either on your scorecard or you have a second scorecard, you would just write, you just do a check for fairway, a check for green and how many putts. And if you want to add the L and the R, if you missed your fairway, add that in there and the proximity. So within one little box on your scorecard to capture everything that you need that can plug into the spreadsheet. It's, it's that simple. So yeah, it's a little bit more work than you probably like, but I'd prefer you to do this way because you would just, as soon as you're writing your score down, you would quickly, you know, check, check to 20 feet done. And yeah, then it's and just imported in. And then at night when you're doing this, Yep. That scorecard is going to bring up a lot of memories. With yep. If you have some basic notes, you'll know exactly what to put into the special yep. comments for each yep. hole. Because right. with the phones the way they work today, I mean, I, I, you know, I'd love to create an app for you, but 
we're, we're so against the distraction factor when it comes to looking at your phone that I prefer to keep it like this. Um, keep it manual, keep it on paper, and then do it after the round. Um, this will also allow you to just better visualize your play and your round and what you need to work on a little bit better versus the apps. So the next thing we need to do, we were talking about performing the distance assessment. We have that all built out into here for you. There's actually a pretty little video of us talking <laughs> and the distance assessment worksheet here. So what you're going to do on this one is you're going to hit six shots per club. And I know this seems like a lot, but if you're going to the range anyway, just work your way from the lob wedge on up to your driver and then average your distances there. And how this works is uh, it's landing spot. Like where is the ball hitting? We're not calculating any type of roll. So if you have a vague idea of where it's landing and you have access to a laser, laser that spot most lasers are pretty good where you can actually laser grass blades now and it yep. gives you some feedback so that's the distance assessment um that is one of the things we want you to do and then we want you to do the body assessment and this might seem like a lot but we're just asking for it one time here and then we're going to do a midterm and then we're going to do one at the end so it's not like a ton but we're doing this because we want you to see like how much you can improve because when people stick to the stuff that we teach them, we always see improvements. There's just no doubt about it. We, almost every single time. Um, so this one right here, this can tell you how to measure your body, you know, find a scale. Uh, if you can get your body fat, that would be great. If you have to go to a trainer or I know some places have like machines that actually do it for you now. And you just sit in the machine for like five minutes and then you get out and it says, hey, you're fat. Just kidding. <laughs> you're 16% body fat. You know, so uh, you can also get this, uh, these calipers, I think, that we have in here somewhere. And we have a full thing in here that teaches you exactly what to do. These are actual photos of Rich. These yeah. are his before photos, if you can believe that or not. I need to update this distance assessment. I think if it's, this is the old version. Yeah, we'll get that updated. Uh, but that one will work for now. And uh, statistic review. Uh, so basically what I want you to do in this, it's not like we're just going to do this and we're not going to have any goals. I want you to be able to set some goals. Having all of this data in front of us, the, the body weight, the distance, um, you know, and the and the scorecard stuff, we're going to be able to pick out some pretty clear goals. And I think that's the key to success is to have a clear goal. If you can always have a clear goal, with, be it with your body or your putting or your chipping or whatever, uh, you need to have a, a clear goal in mind, and then we can design a mission around that. So, uh, you know, basically you're going to print this out and this will be so many things to click on in here, Rich. <laughs> so here's your goal setting worksheet. It's like, where are you now? That's what our first assessment is going to be. Where do you want to go? And the, and the sky is the limit here. Don't limit, limit yourself. Cause so many people have just, they set the goal too short. And when you do that, you know, if you fail, it's like no big deal. You know, it's oh, you know, it only this or that was my goal. So set the goal high, set the bar high. And if you don't hit it, that's fine too. But what you're going to find is, is that you will go further than you would if you have a low goal. And I do this every single month with everything that I do. Um, and then, again, how are you going to get there? We have everything detailed out for you, the whole plan. The number one thing is you got to stick to it. And that's kind of what we cover here. So based on the plan that we give you and your goals, then I want you to go in here and list seven items that you're going to do immediately to uh, get you rolling. And then you sign it. It's like a contract with yourself. 
And it, to me, this, this just works. It's worked for me tremendously. All right. And now I think we're going to talk about, okay, the distance is part of that too. So when it comes to lowering your score, to me, I think knowing your distance is like the number one thing. That's it. I yeah, mean, think about how many times it's you've direction, played someone. It's yeah. direction, which is your aim, and it's distance, right? It's all part of the same thing. So if you're missing left, but you've got the distance right, you're at least flag high. Or if you're short or you're long, you're probably in trouble. You know, there's a lot of stuff in front of and behind greens. So to me, that's like the number one thing. If you can just get your an accurate representation of your distances, that's going to go a long way. So you have any, have something to add, Rich? Yeah. So ideally, with the assessment, will be with good conditions, like very minimal wind. Um, but it's not a, it's not a bad idea to also have, you know, say for example, you go to the range on Thursday and it's blowing. 10, 15 miles right to left. Well, don't rule out the assessment because of that. Do the assessment, but then write down, okay, on a 10 to 15 mile an hour right to left wind, these are my distances. Then yeah, it's come totally back useful then, information. Yeah, if you could have three different, I mean, it's not going to hurt to have more than three or four different kind of distances, whether it be, you know, perfect conditions with the six sign, left to right, wind, right to the left wind, downwind, into the wind. So if you can have all that information, when you're on the course, you'll have a look at your uh, your yardage book and you'll be like, okay, because you'll put all this information into a yardage book. And it just makes things easier for you because um, you don't have to second guess things. Um, you know exactly how far you're going to hit this club in what kind of wind. So ideally, we want the initial assessment to be with minimal wind, perfect conditions, but don't rule out if the wind is going one day, one direction to write that down and keep that, that data. Uh, yeah. You know, even bones, Phil Mickelson's old caddy, uh, which I don't think getting rid of him was such a good idea. I think he probably played better with bones this is my honest opinion, but bones <laughs> said in a video and I'll find it and put it in here somewhere that he wrote down every single shot distance that yep. Phil hit and, <clears throat> I mean, when they're out practicing, he's writing it all down. Like, he knows exactly. Like, he knows on his miss hits. He knows on his good hits. He knows when he flushes it. He knew everything. Yeah. And he had it all with him. So, like, it, it's really important. Yeah, um, they're a matter of, of inches, whereas, you know, most amateurs are a matter of but, yards. But, but like yeah, what you're saying, if, if you are tracking this stuff, like a wind coming into you and a wind going behind you, and then a, and no wind at all, what you're going to find is you can take those that data and you can say, okay, well, downwind, I'm two clubs shorter. Into the wind, I need to take one, one, two, or three clubs more. And you'll be able to see that on your distances. And it, it's pretty amazing what happens. And you get real good at You start to remember this in your mind, and you can do it on the fly on the golf course. All right, so that's enough about that. Let's go into kind of what we're going to do here. I'm going to show the calendar. And I made this. I think it looks pretty, Rich. <laughs> yeah. So let's see if we can blow this up. Maybe a hair more. It's probably going to go for seven weeks. Probably going to take a week off over Thanksgiving, maybe, and then a week or so over Christmas. It's possible. It really depends on what you want to do. So here's the calendar. So Monday, uh, each week, we're going to have a focus on a specific greasing the groove. And what I want you to do, these are going to compound. So week one, you're just going to do putting setup and alignment. You're going to make sure that's good. Week two, you're going to do chipping setup and alignment, but you're also going to do putting setup and alignment. So what will happen is over time, you're going to start with your putter. You're going to put it down. You're going to, as soon as you do putting setup and alignment, you're going to put the putter up. You're going to grab your wedge. You're going to run through your entire bag pretty much in, I don't know, like a minute, two minutes maybe, and then go about your day. 
And then later on that day, come back to it. But at first, you're just going to do putting setup and alignment. If you don't know what GTG is, it's greasing the groove. And we're going to put that inside of here and we'll, and we'll teach you each one of these specifically. Uh, so that's GTG for the week. So week one, we're going to be doing putting. Uh, and then you see on Monday, workout A, distance assessment. We covered that. Rich is going to fix that. I think it's the only change. The only change is going to be, I, I, I want to say we take away the, the, the shortest distance and the longest distance and do an average between the other four. Okay. Yeah. That'll work. I want to say it was a little bit different, but then we I'll have to dig through. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that's going to be the average. That'll give you a more accurate number because that'll pull out that one bad shot that you have or the one really good one that just goes super long um, that's not the norm um, and give you a, a more accurate average. All right. So that'll be much like our uh, median that we did on right. the uh, tap-in. Yeah. So Tuesday, body assessment, we covered that. Uh, this one's going to be painful. Listen to me. It's going to suck. It's going to hurt mentally. I want you to relish in it, and I want you to enjoy the fact that you're not in shape right now. Because what's going to happen is, is when you start this whole program, and you the weight starts coming off, and you start feeling better and looking better, you're going to be really impressed you're going to be almost proud to show your fat picture and then next to your skinny picture. I know that I have put that up in the members area, that, that picture of me many times. And it doesn't bother me one bit, fat Chris. I don't care anymore because skinny Chris is right next to there and he overcame a lot of stuff to get, to get looking like that. And it's just not that I felt better. Uh, I played better, and I was able to even do more exercising, which compounded the results. So on Wednesday, uh, workout B and goal setting covered that. So you have time. It's not going to be like we're not going to slam you with a bunch of stuff right out of the gate. Uh, Thursday, we're going to do what we call a 20-minute walk. And durability program will begin. So that's going to give me time to film that and get that online for you uh, by then. Friday, night putting module, we covered that. And workout C. And uh, I think that'll be good. So then we'll go back to playing, which I have on here. Um, Play and simulator. So if you can't get out, all of these are essentially uh, designed so you can do it indoors or outdoors. Some of the practice, not so much. And then I want you to get out and play uh, on Sunday. So then we'll just kind of repeat the process off and on. Uh, night putting is every other day. It goes along with your workouts. Uh Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays are walking, durability, and your practice. So let's cover practice over here. And this is real rough, but they work just like the workout. Actually, I'll cover a workout first real fast. So we're going to go into here. And you see the video up here. We'll have videos on the practice as well. And then we're going to go down you know, through circuits here, circuit one, circuit two, circuit three. Tells you how many reps, how many sets to do it, and a printable workout sheet. Same thing over here on your golf practice. We designed it the exact same way. We give you a drill to do. You know, So circuit A is red zone, 100 yards and in. We've got feet together drill. And we're going to update this as we work through to keep you kind of working on different things throughout it. Uh, but to start out with, you've got uh, the feet together tempo drill, which we found to be like our number one thing on correcting tempo. And it's the number one thing you're going to lose during the winter, I guarantee it. So we want to maintain that. 
and maybe even improve it somewhat. So then you got 50, 75, and 100 yard targets. Um, you know, set one. Here's how it would work. So I'm going to line up to the 50 yard target. I'm going to hit six shots to it. When I'm done with that, I'm going to move to the 75 yard target and hit six shots to that. Then I'm going to hit a hundred yard target, six shots to that, and I'm going to keep score um, out of these. So you're going to have to determine what your target range is, what you're happy with, uh, a landing zone, so to speak. So it can be big. And if you hit that five out of six times, you would write a five out of six on here. And you'll have a sheet to where you can actually track this and print it out and measure your, your progress. So then you just repeat it. You go back up to the top and then you go back up to the top again. And that's really it. It's simple. And then again, move to your woods and long irons, and then to chipping, and then to putting, and then to sand shots. And we've broken it down all like that. And we're going to give you drills all the way through. So this is almost done. And we should have that done, I think, later today and online. Um, but by the time you're watching this, this will all be live. So that's really it. I mean, I'll go back to the uh, beginning here. So you will begin this on next Monday, which, what is that date, Rich? You know that the date for that? I think November it's the 6th. All right, so we'll get started on that. And like Rich said, we'll probably... You know, if you're yeah. traveling for Thanksgiving, that's cool. Look, if you can get out and play golf on Thanksgiving, <laughs> then the only thing you're probably going to miss is maybe your workout on Friday, but maybe not. You know, for me, I like to keep my weeks pretty similar to normal for holidays. So uh, with that said, that's pretty much the challenge. Rich, you got anything to add? Um. No. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get down to business and, and hammer this out so everybody could kind of see what we're we're up to here. Um, I know we've been pretty vague on a, a lot of this stuff, but uh, you know, anything that you want to do that is uh, good takes time. So if you want good, then it takes time. If you don't want so good. Then you rehash old stuff that you had and you mix it up and uh, you kind of put out a turd out there. But that's not what we're about here. We'd rather postpone it a week and do a very good job so everybody is happy and enjoys the program. So with that said, I think that's it, Rich. It's going to be a good one. I think, you know, because we've seen a lot of people over the winter, over the past few years, shut things down and – come back frustrated and so and there really really isn't a need for it um I, I know it's easy for us to say because we're not in those part of the countries where it snows and does shut down golf courses but um i think we can agree that there are definitely ways that we can keep going in the winter um that don't involve actually walking the golf course so um yeah, and I mean, uh, even when it's cold out here, you saw like the tits facility. And if you don't know what the tits facility is, it's my secret, top secret backyard practice range. And the gate code is tits. So you just put that into the lock and you're welcome to come back here and chip all you want. Now, I do have to warn you, I have a chihuahua. Rich and yeah. this chihuahua have a very strange relationship. <laughs> But this is the like, coolest uh, dog I've ever had. He's so chill mode. He's not like a chihuahua. Everybody that ever meets Carl, he's named after Carl Spackler from Caddyshack, by the way. Everybody that meets Carl says he doesn't act like a chihuahua. He's too relaxed. He's too calm. He's too cool. That's it. Yeah. But there's this one guy. This instant he sees him, he growls at him. And Carl growls at Rich and no one else. I've never seen him growl at anybody, yeah. which is pretty amazing. But, you know, with that said, as long as you're not rich, you're probably okay to get into the gate code. T-I-T-S. 
No, it's not going to hurt my feelings if it, you know, if you uh, skull one under Carl's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of mean. He's just an innocent little four pound dog. Why would you say that? Because <laughs> he growls at me like he's like 50 pounds, the way he, he does growl at me. <laughs> it's pretty funny, I have to tell you. Pretty funny indeed. Uh, All right. So that <laughs> is it. Uh, I think this one went, uh, it's not our usual podcast. This is more informational and uh, kind of a teaching module. So I wanted to keep things fast and to the point because in our regular podcast, we get crazy. Like we'll start talking on something and then we just end up over here and we're like, what were we even talking about? We don't even know. And we're talking about Whataburger commercials and. It should uh, go live since you've mentioned Butch Harmon. Yeah. This one will work. Strangely enough, this Maybe one won't work. Or we watch videos like, yeah. <laughs> or we watch videos like Golf Pac Man. So I think we're going to end on yeah, that. Didn't do any videos today. Yeah, we're going to end on it, though, and put that out there for all to see. All right. Uh, one of the best Pac Man videos of all time. Uh, and it has to do with golf. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. See you next week. Join us. <laughs> hope you enjoy the program. Ah, il m'a flingué. Ah ouais. Oh putain, s'il avait pas un club. Ah, ah le con. Il <rire> <rire>